Hello and welcome to Staying Alive. It's a panel show about our ageing community. But we're not old farts, we're actually still people who are really well connected. Although yeah. this one here sitting next to me, she's a bit of an old fart. Hello Leanne. Um, hello David. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> and Gordon sitting up the end there. Hello, Gordon. I'm the, I'm the oldest part. Yes, yeah, you, you, you are. <laughs> now, today's topic that we're going to talk about is that the Andrews government have mm -hmm. just announced. Now, what is it? It's uh, a new centre. Yep, they're calling it the Pride Centre. And the last budget um, had $15 million towards Whoa. that Pride Centre. Whoa. Is that to buy a by a property or is it to just set up some property that uh, everybody will be paying rent I in? think that's still being talked about at the moment, oh, right. if it's an existing building or whether it'll be something from scratch. Mm. Yeah. Um, obviously the government wants to get the best um, value yeah, for their dollar. The yeah, that's so, right. yeah. uh, and I believe and that the uh, the City of Melbourne is going to be involved as well, therefore, so they're, they're going to get the building from the City of Melbourne. Well, I'm not sure. I don't think that's 100%. Oh, I oh think, well, um, so you would know more than us. Because why, why would you know more than us? Well, I'm the General Manager at Switchboard. Oh, and, look at her. She's um, really important. So um, we're one of a number of community groups, organisations that are involved in the sort of consultation and, and planning stage oh, about so what So you've been we'll, asked? Um, we've been asked for our opinion, right, so right. I guess everyone has to see how it works out. No, that's what but I meant, your yeah, opinion. Yeah. There's, some, there's um, some talk that it should be central, so whether that's CBD or just on the, the fringes of Melbourne, because the plan is not just to have a building that houses um, community groups and LGBTI organisations, but to actually have some public space as well. So whether that's a cafe, a resource centre, meeting rooms, those sorts of things. So it needs to be accessible yep. in terms of transport, um, different hours of the night, yeah. you know, it weekends. Has, it, yep. has to, it has to have public transport going totally. past the door or something. That's yeah. right. Because now, otherwise it won't the, work. the reason I wanted to bring it up today is that it's not about a drop-in centre. So, well, it is, but it's not to you know, like, it has to be an organisation that will then use it. Is that right? Well, I think that the plan is because the organised community organisations we have across Victoria um, go from very big to very small, and so the plan is to actually try and accommodate all of that um, by people who will physically be there. Yep. You know. Office. All the time, yep. but mm -hmm. also to have those smaller groups give them access to a place where they can have a hot desk, access to IT, perhaps other services, meeting, room meeting or, rooms, yeah. and even just um, some sort of incubator where people can work together and collaborate. Yep. And it yep. might be the bigger organisations have resources, say around web design or um, accounting or something right. like that, that yep. the smaller organisations okay. might be able to use. It's, yeah. it's, as I said, really early days, but I think the idea is to. Um, try and be as inclusive as, as possible. Right. And to also have a physical Pride Centre, but to also talk about a virtual Pride Centre so that other country areas um, of Victoria right. are included, um, because there's some great work being done, you know, Shepparton yep. and Geelong oh, and Warrnambool awesome. and down in Gippsland. Awesome. So those organisations need to feel part yep. of that as well. Now, They're going the... to need a pretty big building then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, not right. going to be, it's not going to be small. Yeah, I can't no. remember what the sort of estimates mm. are, but we're talking a number, quite a number of floors. Oh, yeah, have to. And we're talking also about we. It, they're talking about also 15 million sounds like a lot of money, but it's not, not if really. you're looking for something that has to go on for a period of time. Mm. So there needs to be perhaps some sustainability yep. around that and yep. how that's done yep. as well. Mm. Now, the reason I'm bringing it up is because of the ageing community, is that there's not as many organisations that there could or should be. Should one be set up so that um, you know, it then becomes part of it. So, as you were saying, the hot desk or a meeting room or whatever. Gordon, you're part of Vintage Men and you yep. meet weekly. That's right, w yes. What would you think about moving that to to this this um, uh, you know, like hub? Well, it, it would probably be a, a benefit, but then, like, we get calls from people from, like I had a call yesterday, from uh, somebody in Berwick that had a... She was a carer for a 90-year-old man who wanted to sort of re-establish some contact with the gay community. Yep. And so I put her onto the one of our Thursday lunches, which we always have, you know. So um, she was very pleased about that. She said, oh, she, don't, she could bring him down from Berwick to yep. St Kilda to do yep. that, which was mm. lovely. And, and I said, well, you would be able to sit at the table with him 
you know, so yeah. we wouldn't be thing. And she said, "Oh, could I?" And I said, "Yes, oh, of course you could. You know, we don't yeah. mind." But, you know. but don't, don't you think it would? And that that sounds fantastic. And I, I've actually been to one of your meetings. Yes, there right. is a meeting here tonight, uh, and it was fantastic. It was re really good. I, I I did a little talk at it, and I I really got a lot out of it. I, I, and I think that it would be fantastic if that was part of the hub, well, of course because be. or another organisation uh, with the ageing population, so that you're around other younger mm. that's and, right. and, what, and what, instead of being off to one side in mm. a you know like in that's the community right. center you're in is to be there so you're seeing all the youth or all the the, the you know like oh, yeah. the, the late 30s and mm. 40s you know like coming in and out mm. and I think that would do the world of good for uh, the older mm. community don't you think oh, yeah well sure. uh, you've got to realize that the older community most of them are still in the closet which, yes. is, a, which yeah. is a problem so that coming into a gay space like that would probably be a bit daunting for some of them. But, but then but the they would come in. So and they then need they to build would... some big closets in there. Yeah, they can have big closets. <laughs> yeah. But, they could, but it would, but, uh, you, you're right, it would benefit with a mixing of the generations so that the younger so generations can know what went on that's before right. they were born because yeah, exactly. we've got stories we could tell, I can tell and, you. And that, no. that's the wonderful thing. It could be you know, like your group telling the stories to the minus 18 because it's easier mm. for them to get to this hub and then backwards for, for the minus 18 to come in or the switchboard to come in and talk to mm. the... So that their, the older generation is getting a first-hand account of exactly what's going on yep. in the community yeah. instead of feeling a little bit on, on the outside. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think there's some talk about the Gay and Lesbian Archives actually having a bigger role to play and mm -hmm. in, rather than having everything in storage to actually have displays and oh, things like that. So lovely. that could be a project that um, the archives people and older people and younger people could work on in Together. terms of mixing technology with the old, you know, stuff that they've yep. got in boxes yep. and, and doing that. And I'm sure there's enough material to have certain themes throughout mm. the year. Oh, and, and absolutely. Well, you're, you've always been heavily involved in the quilts as well. Oh, well, I was involved with the quilt, yes. Yeah. But that's, but that's uh, now being turned over I think to the um, AIDS Council, the, they're right. taking it over. But isn't the AIDS Council looking at coming into this as well? Well, well they've sold their building. Yep, yep. they've so, sold their building, so right. they're looking yeah. for somewhere to go. Yeah. I, I think this is a really important one, and it's one that we've we've got to sort of follow through. Anyone out there that really wants it to to happen, because we need that ageing population as part of this group. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. the the whole thing. Mm. If you're lucky, you'll all get old. That's yeah, true. Yes. That's very true. Oh, but and we've we've won the the bingo! Yay! <laughs> we've, we've done it. So thank you so much for watching, staying alive today. We've got to thank Gordon, Leanne, and Thanks, myself, David. David, and we'll be back again real soon because we're not too old to be staying alive.